Hello, good morning. I really want to apologize to you for not joining you um, in person. I am Baroness Helena Kennedy. I'm an international lawyer. I'm the director of the International Bar Association's Human Rights Institute. I've been a practitioner at the English Bar um, for many decades. I'm a King's Counsel, and I'm also a member of the British Parliament in that I'm a member of the House of Lords. And I had wanted to be with you because this is a subject matter very close to my own heart. I remember only too well uh, when this terrible atrocity um, became a public uh, uh, became public knowledge, and it was shocking. We had all been horrified um, when, first of all, there was a revolution in 1979 in Iran, and we somehow had imagined there might be democracy, an end to uh, the torture and uh, and issues that had blighted uh, the, uh, um, the Shah's period in office. We had imagined that democracy would come and that it would be, there would be freedom and liberty for the people of Iran, that they would enjoy a very different kind of, uh, of existence. But sadly, it wasn't to be. And the arrival of um, the Ayatollah put paid to many of the dreams of young people who had hoped for a different kind of society. And many of us in places like Britain shared that hope for our, our fellow students and uh, for our, the, the people who were uh, our age living in Iran. We thought the future had been theirs, but it was taken from them. And, uh, and what followed was really shocking because uh, first of all, um, there was a great deal of oppression of those who had wanted democracy. Many of the young people who perhaps were on the left or in different uh, organizations wanting change uh, suffered the consequences of this uh, new regime. Uh, many people um, uh, ended up in prison. And over those years, um, before we ever get to 1988, there were sh serious horrors. There was of course the war with Iraq, which uh, took a great toll on Iran, um, but the people who were arrested in the years leading up to 1988. Many young people were in prison. They were political prisoners. And uh, an order was given in 1988 that they should all be executed. And, uh, and we saw a huge crime against humanity take place with many thousands of young people, gener a whole generation of the young, many of them basically murdered. It was extrajudicial killing. What is extrajudicial killing? It wasn't, it was, there was no due process. There was no proper trial. It was an order given from above um, by the Ayatollah that they should be executed. And they were executed in a cruel and terrible way. Uh, their families never recovered the, their bodies for many of them and didn't know where they were buried. And, uh, and the pain of that lives on. And if there is no justice, then I'm afraid it will be a wound in uh, the history of Iran for many decades, many, many, many years to come. And so accountability is vital. Accountability in, for crimes is one of the things that people yearn for um, in order to basically move on in life and in nationhood. And I hope that one day soon that Iran will throw off the theocratic regime that controls Iran, the cruelties that it manifests uh, in so many of the things it does, and in the cruelty that has, has been seen only too recently in the treatment of those, starting with the demonstrations of the young women after the death of uh, the young woman, Amini. Um, uh, terrible, terrible treatment of those who protested her killing. And that she was killed. And then uh, the terrible, terrible uh, response of the state to the indignation of young women who say, we want freedom, we want to live our lives, we're not going to be controlled in the way that you're expecting us to be controlled. And the young men who took to the streets with them and their family mem members who supported them. And so you're going to ask me as a lawyer, what can be done? How do we get accountability? Well, one of the things that we have to be calling for is that those who were involved, who are still alive, should be facing trial. They should be facing processes for what they did. And they should be on long lists of sanctionees 
unable to travel, they shouldn't be able to send their children to universities in the West, and uh, whether they be Oxford or Harvard and so on, as they indeed managed to do somehow. It shouldn't be possible for them to still enjoy those freedoms when so many others don't. And, and I think that uh, we have to be calling upon nations like my own, Britain, to expand its universal jurisdiction so that the crimes for which people can be committed as they transit through uh, Britain or when they uh, come here on vacation or for all manner of reasons, to look after their assets they keep outside of the country, which indeed they do, we should make sure that they can be arrested. And people who have been involved in these terrible crimes and in the 1988 massacre should be brought to justice, even if it will not happen in their own jurisdiction. It has to be promised that it will happen if they come anywhere near nations which respect universal jurisdiction and have created domestic law to be able to deal with those who are criminals uh, who have committed terrible crimes in other countries, especially in this instance, we're talking about in your countries, in Iran. And so I just wanted to say to all of you, I had wanted to be there with you to talk about the ways in which one can try to demand processes, demand that nations recognize that there is a history of serious crime going back, going back uh, to 1979, 1980, and then through, and then this horror in 1988, but the continuing horror and the ways in which society, the society is divided and the ways in which uh, people's lives are blighted um, by the power that is exacted and uh, the control exercised by those who are currently in power. But we have to give the warning, it will not be forever. And there will be a reckoning. There will be a reckoning. And we have to call upon international law. We have to uh, use what is available to us through the United Nations. And we have to be having events at the United Nations so that people know the full background of Iranian government's crimes. So um, I just wanted to apologize to all of you for not being with you, but I send you all my support, my solidarity in this struggle for justice.